Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and today I'm going to do a quick breakdown of the course we all affectionately know as APES, or AP Environmental Science. If you're ready to think like a mountain and write like a scholar, let's get started. If you're watching this video and you're a new APE student this fall, welcome to an incredibly unique community of scholars and environmentalists. If you're considering taking APES, the first thing I need you to know is that this is not a class about primates or any other relatives of monkeys. It is, however, a really unique look at how deeply interconnected basically every aspect of the human world and the natural world are. First, let's take a look at the content that will be covered in this course. If you're familiar with the saying an inch deep and a mile wide, it's a great way to think about the scope of what this course covers. You'll learn about virtually every aspect of the natural world and quite a bit of the human world. How we grow food, how we build cities, where our poop goes when we flush it down the toilet, and how to slow human population growth. And no, not the Thanos way, it turns out that sex ed and increasing economic opportunities for women is pretty effective. More specifically, we'll cover nine units ranging from familiar biology concepts like ecology and biodiversity to anthropogenic or human-related concepts such as land use, energy production, and pollution. And to top it all off, we'll end with the keystone topic in Unit 9, Global Change. And spoiler alert, the Earth is changing very rapidly, and it's because of all the human activity you'll learn about in Units 1 through 8. Now, when it comes to the exam, you'll need to answer 80 multiple choice questions in 90 minutes and 3 FRQs in 70 minutes. The multiple choice questions will have a variety of formats, with some of them asking for just straight up factual recall, and others providing you with a stimulus such as a graph, figure, or even a scientific passage. The 3 3 response questions, or FRQs, will be slightly different, with the first one being based on an experiment, the second one on a set of math problems, and the third one centered on an environmental problem and a solution to this problem. The nice thing about FRQs in APES is that you can write in a really simple, concise format. Each FRQ will have several subparts, and each of those subparts can usually be answered with one or two concise, vocab-rich sentences. There's no need to write complex thesis points or look for elaboration or complexity points. None of the craziness that goes on in all of those AP history classes. So this brings us to the inevitable question asked by every AP student from the dawn of time. How hard is this AP class? And the answer is, it totally depends on who you are as a student and your previous AP experience. If this is your first AP course, it's going to feel like a lot to learn all of this content throughout the course of the year. APES covers a really wide range of content, but luckily for you, it covers that content in a little bit less depth than many other APs. If you've taken AP Bio, Chem, or Physics, APES will feel quite a bit more manageable. The math that you have to do is not nearly as complex, and the breadth of topics covered is wider, but the depth of those topics is generally shallower in APES. Plus, you already have some of the scientific thinking skills that you need to do well in an AP Science class. If you've taken AP Psych or AP Human Geo, APES is going to feel very similar in the complexity of the information that you learn and the style of writing that you're asked to do on the FRQs. If you're familiar with the channel already, you know that I sign off every video with two mantras. Think like a mountain, write like a scholar. However, these are way more than just catchphrases. These are also my two biggest pieces of advice for every APE student. Thinking like a mountain means learning to embrace the interconnectedness of topics in APEs. And also to ask yourself, with every human event or every natural event, what are the environmental implications of this event? Looking down the road into the future and thinking about that interconnectedness of systems. Writing like a scholar refers to the concise, vocabulary-rich form of writing that you'll need to do on FRQs and ultimately in college science courses. 